Hi, my name's Craig. I'm the technical manager here at QNAP UK. Uh, with March 31st this year being designated World Backup Day, we just wanted to remind you of the importance of doing uh, backups of all your data, um, as well as the different ways we can assist with that. Uh, we do everything from something as simple as a USB drive that's connected to your machine. So you can just do a one-to-one -one backup directly from your machine uh, straight to a USB uh, drive that you've got connected to something a little more complex, a little more all-encompassing uh, with a NAS device, perhaps two NAS devices, um, all the way up to uh, linkages with the cloud as well if you needed an off-site backup function. Uh, so the first thing I'll cover off is just simply how to get your data off your computer to something else. Uh, so what we've got here is we've got a couple of our NAS expansion chassis, which are also just standard storage enclosures. Um, in the past, the, the QNAP expansion chassis uh, have, have been just that, expansion options for your NAS. Um, without a NAS, you couldn't use them. Um, with the uh, latest developments that we've done with the new, the new range that's on the screen here, um, all five of these options here are USB connected. Uh, we do have different options with SATA connectivity and even SAS connectivity if you wanted something with a lot more uh, speed available to them as well. Um, but to keep it simple, we'll stick with the USB ones. And we do everything from two, four to eight bays in the desktop chassis. And we've got a four bay and a 12 bay option um, if you wanted a rack mount. Um, these devices simply will just connect straight to your computer. You will see them as a drive and you can choose them as a backup destination for whatever backup software that you choose. So on a Mac, we would generally recommend using the built-in software that's called Time Machine. So if I look on my Mac here, I've disabled my Time Machine backup just for the purpose of showing how to set it up. Um, you've got options here to select a backup disk and it will just pop up here. So here we see the NAS I've got configured with it, but if you had a USB drive connected, it would just show up there in that list as well as an option that you can select. And the USB one is much simpler. You literally just click on it and it will do backups to that device. Um, as it's a network option I've got selected here, it will need me to authenticate. I do have to type in a password to access the device across the network, uh, simply because lots of people on my network would be able to see that drive. And if you want everybody to have their own backup location, uh, each person would have their own username and password and a pre-configured location on the NAS uh, that their backup data goes to that um, perhaps only they have access to. So you've got some basic options to set up um, Time Machine uh, built right into the device as well. Um, you can also do this same thing within Windows. So here I've got a virtual copy of Windows. And if you just go down to the bottom here and type in backup, you will see some options there for the backup. And you can see I've got it turned on here. So if you were using anything prior to Windows 10, I believe it was called backup and restore. Um, but now they're just calling it simply backup and they've got the function in here called file history. So within file history, you've got some basic options. Um, it works very much like Time Machine, um, effectively, cap effectively capturing all the different data. Um, as this is just a test virtual machine I've got here, there's not much data to back up on this one. Um, but this one is backing up across to the NAS, so we can see the path that it's backing up to. I've got loads of capacity available there for the backup to go. Um, so you get to choose backup my files every hour. You can choose it less or more if you want to, and you can choose how long to keep your backups for. Um, the default settings I'm showing here is what it's set to, so every hour, forever. Um, so that's quite comprehensive, and it's very much the same with the, uh, the Apple software. I think the Apple software just keeps backing up until your backup drive has no more space. So it will keep as many versions as you've got space to keep, um, rather than a, a set time limit like on the, uh, the Windows version here. Um, so those are the, the basic options. Now, whether you're doing a direct backup or whether you're doing um, one across the network, um, these are really easy options. They're built into the operating systems completely for free. Uh, there are third party options out there as well to go with some different functionality if you want it. So if you wanted to go um, with a, a separate piece of backup software because it has a bit more functionality than the free versions. Um, you can, of course, go with those as well. Uh, they're usually not free, so you will usually have to pay for it. Uh, something like a Cronus True Image, something like that. It can do images of your entire machine, so you can do easy restores, things like that. Um, if we go back here, though, what I'll show you is how I've set up the Time Machine backup function in the NAS for network connectivity. Um, so by default, it is off, so you have to come into the Hybrid Backup Sync 3 application and then go down to the services menu and you have to enable whichever option you want. I've got both ticked here. So I've got the shared time machine enabled as well as local NAS accounts, uh, but you can set up whichever option that you wish. So once you've got this turned on, it will appear in the time machine settings without these ticked first. 
Um, the NAS is not announcing itself as a time machine backup destination. So if that's a step you're struggling on, um, this is where you've got to come to enable the time machine backup functionality. So that's just one step you've got to do. You don't have to do that for Windows. Windows will just back up to a network drive location. It's a bit simpler for the Windows option, um, but both very capable at getting data backed up for your machine. Um, another option that you can do, especially if you've got lots and lots of computers, so this would be NAS specific rather than a direct attached USB drive, is you can install some third party software. We've got lots of options on the QNAP, so if I open up uh, the App Center, if we go across here to the backup and sync options, we've got things like um, Archieware and we've also got different options. The one I'm going to show you uh, that I've got installed right now is Nikivo. Um, the Zopero, there's, there's a lot of different options that we have available on the QNAP for you to install. Uh, the one that I've got running here is called Nakivo, so this is running inside the NAS. Uh, currently I've got no jobs created. If I go down to settings and go to the inventory option, this will allow me to add some new inventories. Inventories are things that you're going to back up. So here if I go down to the inventory option and click add new, I can back up any number of different items. So this would not be suitable for something like Mac OS, for example, that would probably still have to be the time machine option. But if you have um, 20 different Windows machines on the network, um, instead of going to each one of those Windows machines and installing a backup software on each one of them, you can come here and you can go, I want to add in some physical machines and you can change the option here for uh, Windows. You can say, uh, this is the uh, whole office backup, let's say. Uh, and you can type in a range of host names or IP addresses. So you can say, I want um, every um, device from uh, number one up to um, 20, for example, done. So you can type that in. Oh, I think I've got to type the whole IP, sorry. There you go. So that's going to now get those 20 different machines that I've got um, backed up so that I can do those. And you can type in whether it's a password, the username and password. So if you've got an admin account on each of those machines, you can just type the admin password and it will go off and install an agent of sorts. So in the Kivo, they call it a transporter. Uh, so that will be a small piece of uh, software that's running locally on that machine that effectively gives this central location uh, permission to gain access to that machine to pull down all the data and the changes based off the schedule that you set. Uh, so this is a really good way to centralize everything. You can only uh, you, can, you can back up all the different machines and you only have to check one place if all the backups of everybody's machine has worked. Um, and it's really good because you can do the remote installation of the software. You don't have to go to each individual machine and interrupt the person using the machine. Uh, you can set it up as an admin for everybody quite centrally as well. Uh, so we've got quite a few different options that would do this type of function as well um, on, the NAS, it's, on the NAS as well. Um, so we'll jump back into uh, Hybrid Backup Sync 3 and we'll talk about some other functions that you can do. So once the data's in the NAS, that's one step, um, but maybe you want to do uh, perhaps an off-site backup, an off-site sync. So we've got different options over here for backup and sync, depending what you want to do. So if we say we wanted to do a one-way sync, you get lots of different options. So you can do these syncs. Um, from the QNAP to another NAS, so that would be the remote NAS option. Um, if it's not to another QNAP and it was to something else that was network-based, uh, we've got a few uh, generic options that you can do there. So if your other device supports things like rsync servers, perhaps you've got a Linux server, uh, you could back up to that. Uh, remote FTP servers, perhaps you've found a, a cloud-based FTP host that you'd be able to use. And you've also got some just standard remote network shares that you can back up to. Um, if you wanted to back up to one of the QNAP expansion chassis attached to the NAS, uh, you can choose the local NAS option and then you can pick the locally attached drive, uh, which would be the USB drive that's locally attached to just get the data off the QNAP to that um, extra device so that there's two copies of the data. And finally, you've got a lot of options down here for a lot of different cloud options. So we've got a lot of the ones you've heard of as well as some that are maybe enterprise specific, um, but you've got a lot of different options here with Azure, you've got Google Drive, there's a lot of different options. So as we start scrolling down, there's quite a few different ones we've got. Um, and also down at the bottom here, we do have a web dev option. And um, so if one of your favorite providers is not in this list, uh, there's a very good chance that they will either support the web dev function and they'll probably give you the settings for web dev connectivity into their software. Um, or the other option is that you can often use the Amazon S3 and S3 compatible option. Um, a lot of different um, uh, region specific cloud providers will set up their service in an S3 compatible way. So we can add their details in with that one there as well. 
Um, so once you've got the uh, the provider chosen um, and you've decided on the schedules and everything you want, you can have your data backed up to the cloud um, just as easy um, as if you were backing up to a USB drive that's attached. It will just obviously take a bit longer uh, because you are limited by the upload speed connection. Uh, we do have a lot of users as well that may buy quite a few of the USB drives and they'll rotate them out. So they might have five of them and they'll rotate them out Monday through Friday. So you can create five separate backup jobs uh, where each happens once a week. So Monday's job happens on a Monday and they just make sure that the Monday device is plugged in on that day. Uh, perhaps they take that unit off site to the director's house, um, put it in a fire safe, something like that, so that they can uh, get their data protected if they don't have another off site location uh, with a fast enough connection to do it automated across, uh, across the internet, for example. Um, so that's most of the options I wanted to cover. The one final option I wanted to talk about would be snapshots. Um, so every uh, QNAP NAS supports snapshots now. So one thing that you can do with snapshots is enable them on a uh, per uh, pool basis. So you can go through and enable uh, different uh, levels of snapshotting based on different items. The best thing about snapshots is it very easily protects you for things like uh, malware and ransomware, but it also allows very, very quick restores. Um, so if anybody was to say accidentally delete a file, something like that, um, using snapshots is one of the easiest ways to recover from those. So here in the snapshot options, you can take a snapshot of a, um, uh, of a particular shared folder, volume, anything like that, um, and it's going to store that within the storage pool itself. So it's not technically backed up, to another device, it's stored within the device. So if the device was to fail, you would still lose the data. So don't rely on it if this is the only function that you've got. Um, snapshots is just a way to do very quick restores of your data. Um, if you did want to use snapshots as your main sort of backup, we can accommodate that. So we do have options down here for snapshot replica. So with snapshot replica, it will allow you to create a replication job. Just enable the service. You can create a replication job of the snapshots from one NAS to another NAS. That would have to be two QNAPs to do that, um, but it will let you pick which folder that you want that data to go from and to um, on the other device, but that's going to be a way that you can call snapshots your backup um, so that you can get them um, off-site, um, off-device to another location. So should you ever have to do a restore, um, it's also very convenient to do that as well. Um, so hopefully that's helped you. Hopefully that's uh, maybe reminded some people that maybe don't have um, backups, they've been thinking about it, um, perhaps worried about how uh, their protection is currently set up. Um, I will close it out with just one final note of a lot of users do sometimes think RAID is a backup. Um, so they've got their data perhaps in a QNAP, um, it's protected against drive failures, things like that. Um, RAID is not a backup. Your data is still technically only in one physical device in one physical place. RAID is excellent so that you can keep working in the event of a drive failure. And it's certainly uh, better than just having the data just on your laptop, for example, because um, it does protect you against at least one of those drive failures that if the storage in your laptop died, that, that would have no protection whatsoever. But it is definitely not considered a backup. So if your data is the only place it is, is inside a NAS running perhaps RAID 5, RAID 6, uh, a RAID 1 mirror, something like that, I would not consider it a backup if your data is only in one place. If it's on your laptop and in the NAS, yes, that's that would pass as a backup. Um, but if the only place your working files are is in one location, like the NAS or your laptop, it's definitely not backed up, even if you have RAID. Um, so that's just one thing to, uh, to close out on there. Um, it is still very important to make sure that you have your data in at least two physical places. Even better, get, get your data off-site as well if you, if you can uh, find a method to do that as well. Um, if anybody has any questions about any of these options, please do let us know in the comments below and happy World Backup Day.